Almost painful. Yeah. I'm worried for your... You can see my eyes are welling out and everything. I'm worried for his asshole later. <laughs> In Singapore, hotheads have no shortage of options to bet their stomachs of steel against. Just take a look at all these spice challenges. There's this pasta that uses the exotic sounding Trinidad scorpion peppers. There's also the Nashville hot chicken, which is something of an understatement for a dish that includes ghost pepper powder. And if those dishes aren't enough of a death wish, you can confront this rack of ribs cooked with the world's reigning champion of chili, the Carolina Reaper. Why do people respond to spicy food differently? Can your spice tolerance be trained? Let's find out. But first, let me introduce you to my hostages. Uh, I mean host. Hi, I'm Ting Ting. Hi, I'm April. Yep, today we are gonna be guinea pigs for our team. Yeah. We're doing a science challenge, right? Yep. What, what's Is it really a science challenge? I think they are just trying to see our pain tolerance tolerance level, yeah. Round one. Weighing in at 50 to 100,000 Scoville units and popular in Southeast Asian cuisine, we have the Bird's Eye Chili, aka Chili Party! It's puny, but it packs a punch, so watch out, folks! How do you feel? You took a big bite, eh? I just took yeah, a big you, bite. <laughs> you must eat the, the seeds to taste the, the spicy taste inside the chili. Yeah, yeah, it's I kind of. I enjoy eating chili party a lot, lah. So I guess this is okay for me. So let's say like max spicy, mala, da da version, and then buffalo wings. How do you react to that? I feel like the tree is like really still okay for me. How about you? I I don't usually eat max spicy, uh, cause I really feel it's spicy. And like after you eat max spi max spicy, right? You need the toilet. Ah, uh, okay. 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 Violent okay. Activity <laughs> the next day. So yeah. I don't usually eat mala. If I were to eat mala, I would say piao la. Piao la. <laughs> He's Unlike, already perspiring. The body knows what the mind yeah. is. Reactions to spice are a lot like asking your partner if they cheated on you. The symptoms and results include but are not limited to sweating, crying, hiccuping, the sensation of your lips burning, and in some cases, hearing is affected. So who is to blame for putting a strain on the relationship between you and your body? The culprit, capsaicin. You might think you're tasting spice, but it's actually a physical sensation. Capsaicin binds to specific receptors throughout your body that indicate an increase in temperature. They can be found in your nose, throat, and mouth, which is why your lips feel like they're on fire. How do you feel like just eating the tail it's part? It's spicy, I don't know whether you can tell I'm really like... Oh yeah, really, yeah, he's perspiring me. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> the reason April is sweating is thanks to the receptors in his skin, which react to both temperature changes and certain chemical influences. Capsaicin essentially tricks the body into thinking there's an increase in temperature. Your brain is then triggered to set off cooling down mechanisms, like sweating. Capsaicin irritates mucous membranes in your nose and eyes, and mucus is produced as a defense mechanism to get rid of the irritation. These capsaicin receptors are also present in nerves that control your diaphragm. Capsaicin causes a type of spasm in the diaphragm, in the form of sudden contractions, aka <coughs> hiccups. As for why capsaicin might affect your hearing, it has to do with these tubes that connect your throat and ears. They help to regulate the pressure in your inner ear, so if too much mucus builds up, the tubes could get blocked. When this happens, you'll experience muffled sounds or even temporary deafness. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. <laughs> In that case, let's move on to Round 2 Weighing in at a minimum of 1 million Scoville units and hailing from Northeast India, we have the Ghost Pepper. India's army even uses it in their chili grenades, so it's definitely explosive. To me, this just looks like a wimpy or red chili. And just now, April said, like, this one looked weaker than the chili body just now. And I said, don't get cheated by the looks of the chili. Yeah, you never know. So only one way to find out. Yes, right? is to chew on it. Okay. <laughs> Take a bigger bite. <laughs> Take a bigger bite. The hot builds up faster than the chili body, I can say. But it also has a sweetness in it, I think. I don't know whether it's my I, my taste bud got a big problem or what. But I kind of find it quite nice. <laughs> initially, there was, I'm looking the, at the, the first bite, right? Initially, there's no, not much of spice, but then <laughs> afterwards it starts to, it starts to kick in, uh. and now it's kicking in. It's getting more intense as I speak. I think he can get a raise after this. 
Here's why some people have a higher spice tolerance than others. There are two theories, physical and psychological. Some people's tongues really are just built different. They may have more of those heat receptors in your mouth and naturally are more sensitive to spice. But what's really fascinating is the psychological theory. Consuming capsaicin can trigger a flood of endorphins, a chemical that helps us deal with stress or relieve pain. In addition, capsaicin depletes a neurotransmitter called substance P, which is responsible for sending signals to your brain that your body is hurting. This is why it even has a medical purpose in the form of pain-numbing capsaicin cream, which can be used to combat aches caused by migraines or arthritis. Some folks learn to associate this rush of endorphins with pleasure. Studies show spice lovers feel the same levels of burning intensity as spice haters, but they derive enjoyment out of it. Hmm, kind of sounds like masochist. You, you took another bite. Yeah, I took another bite. Actually, I think it's, it's quite nice. Eh? I see your mouth trembling. Eh? I see this stuff with chili, but... You see, I, I train my spice on, but look at me now and look at you now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing. Well, Tang Tang, maybe you'll finally feel something with the last pepper. <laughs> Dethroning the ghost pepper is the world's spiciest chili, the new king of heat that bears its blazing crown, the Carolina Reaper. At double the Scoville units of the ghost pepper, this definitely deserves its wicked reputation. Good yeah, good luck. Maybe because I saw it quite quickly. The ghost yeah. pepper kind of built up faster than the Carolina. Yeah, I'm still waiting, right? Okay. Yeah, this is a pirated one. <laughs> no kick. Eh. But oh, it's still yeah. hot, lah. I, I can also feel like uh, the second bite I take, I took, right? Then I can feel like, oh, the middle of my tongue and the back part starting to build up the spice, uh, the hot. Yeah, but still can tolerate. I feel like I could even go for a second bite. Just because go. Because I just swallowed go. it like very fast. Quickly, I didn't leave it on my tongue, but also because I was scared. Like. I tried one more bite. Uh. You, you. I tried two bites already. Oh. I feel like there's a lot of saliva <laughs> building up in my mouth. Okay, now I can feel very spicy. <laughs> like it's a slow thing, and it engulfs it, engulfs you. So like the chili party all that is like quick attacks. Yeah. On your tongue then after that it, it disappears. But this is like it's building up more yeah. and more and it's Yeah, slowly you can maybe feel a bit numb on, on your the, tongue, on your throat. On the on the lips area. No no kick. You can still talk quite normally, so how do you train your spice tolerance? I think you just eat chili every day. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need. I you think need you. I think day, you need yeah. this. Yeah. Actually, really, I kind of like really go for spicy food every day. Like we be it, it's like mala or tom yum or like even the tom yum is spicy. I will still need chili padi to go with it. If I go for monster curry, I go for the highest level of monster curry. So yeah, because I think I enjoy, I <laughs> enjoy spicy food. That's why, perhaps that's that's why I can tolerate this more than April. Maybe. Start from today, you can train yourself from eating spicy food every day. Yeah. You know when I was hearing you say all those what tom yum, then still put like chili padi, like it sounds damn bad now to me. <laughs> well, it might be a little late now for you, April, but for future reference, these tips might come in handy. Spice tolerance can be gradually built up by exposing yourself to hotter and hotter food. When your heat receptors are constantly stimulated, you're going to need higher and higher amounts of capsaicin to feel the burn. Handy tip number two is to have milk, not water, to help with dousing the flames. Capsaicin is not water soluble, meaning that H2O won't take away that burning sensation. In fact, water might just spread it around more, causing the pain to last longer. What you need instead is casein, the protein found in mammals' milk that binds to and washes away the spicy capsaicin molecules. Things like almond or soy milk don't have this protein, so sorry vegans. But if you are lactose intolerant or just avoiding milk in general, good news, something sour will do the trick as well. Capsaicin is alkaline, so the acid you get by sucking on some limes, for example, will help to neutralize its activity. After taking a spoonful, do you think it helps you as compared? Actually, I think it does. My mouth area, my throat there, like, it seems to have cleared up a bit. You see now, I can like, talk quite calmly. Ooh. Oh, okay, because I have low tolerance level towards, towards sour thing. You know I'd rather go for a spicy food than a sour food. I just don't like sour food. It feels less sour than usual now. Maybe because like the taste buds are 
a bit numb. Ah, okay. From the chili, but uh, whether it helps a bit, like now I just taste sour stuff. Yeah, maybe I can experiment it again. I can eat the chili again. I, I eat this and I just to see whether it helps or not. Do you still want to go no, for no, a bite? No, no. I don't even really want to look at you doing this. <laughs> Let's see whether it helps with the getting rid of the hot. Does it? No. But your taste buds now is filled with like sour instead of spiciness. Right? No, the, the no. sourness will just go off quite fast and then the hot will come back yeah. again. The back of my throat, right? I can still feel the hot there. But the tongue not so. So maybe if the lime juice stay on your tongue then it helps. Okay, so it's the end of our experiment. Do you think your spice tolerance level has actually gone up a bit? No, it has not gone up. Only my spice awareness has gone up. <laughs> so now I know what uh, different chili levels, uh, they, what they actually do to my body. What I learned was that I think ice cream was the most relieving thing for me. Then how about you? Yeah, maybe the ice cream helps the most. Soothe your the tongue. And then you don't feel the hot on your tongue anymore. I'm not gonna be eating spicy food for a while. What's your takeaway? I, I don't really have any takeaway. I mean, I will continue eating spicy food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like tom yum with chili party. <laughs> okay, you, you can enjoy that. Yeah. <laughs> but have you ever tried um, chili gelato before? Chili flavored gelato. Why you say something? <laughs> because there is in the market and I tried before.